Welcome to Perspectives El Paso. I'm Professor Leon Blevins of El Paso Community College Television. Now my history here in El Paso with this school goes back to 1964 when I studied some there and then uh, ended up getting a master's degree in 1967, left for five years and came back in 1972. Exciting things happened, especially from 1972 until now. And one of the most exciting things that happened to me was meeting a woman in my classes at community college named Maria Esther Martinez. Why was I excited about that? Is because she is one of the best known, if not the best known, ranchero singers here in El Paso, or Tahana singers here in El Paso. Uh, she and I have performed together. When my wife could not go do a program with me as Mrs. Claus, Maria Esther Martinez would be my Mrs. Claus. In other cases, at El Fresco Friday, we would be dance partners. In other cases, state convention one time of community college counselors, uh, she and her small band were performing and I was doing Chico, the mariachi dancer with women and children from the crowd that was there that day. So I have a lot of wonderful crystal moment memories. Maria Esther, glad Professor you're willing to Blevins. come on and be on the show with me. Thank you, thank you for inviting me. I'm glad to be here. And I didn't even ask you to dress up as Mrs. Claus for this. I should have, I should have known. <laughs> we could have done it, we could have yeah, done Santa and Mrs. Claus. we could have done it, yes. <laughs> oh, great. Well, tell us, tell the audience and, and tell me a little bit about your background here. Are you a native El Pasoan? Well, I was born in El Paso by accident. My father and my uncles were picking cotton in uh, Woodrow Bean's farm. He, Woodrow Bean at one time was county judge. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, I don't know if the women went to take them clean clothes or what they were doing there, but I was born there in a hut. So I'm an American citizen by accident. American but how citizen. fortunate I am to be an American citizen. Now this was in what we call Lower Valley or Upper Valley approximately, having out Around, uh, close to Frontera Street. Close to Frontera Street. Uh -huh. Not far from Donovan. Okay, so then where did you go to school here? Well, first I started at Alamo. We had just moved here from, uh, from Juarez. I started at Alamo School, then my dad got a better job and realized that the more money he made, the higher the rent went there in the projects. Oh. So we, he moved us into two rooms right there on Overland and then moved us into the basement of a house on Monday Street in the Sunset area. And I went to Vilas for two years and my dad started buying the war bonds so he could have enough money for a down payment for the, our first house. Then did you end up going to El Paso High? No, I went to Tech. I'm a lion. Oh, okay. Yes. Well, good for you. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm a lion. I got married, went overseas, came back, went overseas again, lived in Iran for two, three years. Okay. Came back, went back to school. That's when I met you. And uh, then later went to UTEP and got my degree at UTEP. And we need to mention that you became an educator. Yes, sir. Tell, tell us where you've been teaching. I've been at Rusk. Well, I started off at uh, Hillside. Well, no, first I was with Isleta Independent. Okay. At Robert F. Kennedy School. Robert F. Kennedy. And then, um, oh my goodness. I remember seeing it at Hillside when you were there. Uh-huh, then Hillside when I came to El Paso. Did you teach Independent. at Douglas? Are you told me different places Yes, you then Rusk for Rusk. six years. Okay. Then I was at Douglas Elementary, went to Savala, and also Savala, and then um, Kohlberg Elementary. And right now I am at Hawkins Elementary, which was at one time San Juan Elementary. Okay. And I love it there. Well, my wife at one time was at Hawkins, and another time she was at Hillside. She was, my Shanna, she was in, you know her, uh, she was in speech therapy and deaf education and things like that. Now, now you showed me out front uh, something that you brought about uh, remarks oh. from Sylvester Reyes. Do you have that? I sure us do. About that? A commendation for being a, a great teacher. Now, I don't know, we'd probably get a big reflection off of this. Yes. But you taught music as well as what else? Well, I've done so many, many things. Many things, but yes. you really love music the That's best. That's what I love best. That's what I love best. Okay, so I Sylvester don't think Reyes in 2000, Congressman Reyes in 2012 gave you a commendation about you and your choir 
yes. and your performances. And he, he and his wife, Carolina, are wonderful friends of ours and great people. So I'm glad that you brought this to show us. And uh, tell us about you, what, what you've been doing lately. Have you retired from uh, teaching in the school? No, I'm still, I'm still at the schools. I'm at Hawkins Elementary. Okay, so you're still at Hawkins. I'm okay. still at Hawkins, and I, and I love it there. And they have so many wonderful, wonderful teachers. Right before school was out, Ms. Rascon, one of the fourth grade teachers, had this very, very special project. What she did was she let each one of the students choose some historical figure and do research on them. And then the day of the presentation, it was a wax museum. They all stood very still. <laughs> and then when they were touched, they w gave their presentation. Oh, that's great. Uh-huh. And uh, we have a, a little boy who was in special ed, and he was John F. Kennedy. And he was so good because he started off with looking straight into your face. Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. And he was so good. We were so proud of all of them, all of them. They were to have on their report three interesting facts. The one that did Juan Gabriel, I told him that uh, Juan Gabriel bought an old convertible Volkswagen, just so old that the top was so worn out from the sun. And he bought that from a local policewoman, told her he wanted to buy her car. And he said, and she said, no, but what am I gonna move around in? He said, no, 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 the one you have in behind your mother's house. Well, that way Juan Gabriel was able to move all around Juarez, El Paso, Las Cruces, and nobody would imagine. A very famous singer, yes. Very, very famous singer. Nobody imagined that Juan Gabriel would be driving that <laughs> ugly thing. <laughs> and the other one was when I was doing interior design, I sold him a 24 karat gold plated chandelier to put in his house on in Juarez, the one on the 16 of September. Is that, that the one that's become a museum now, yes. basically? Yes. Mm -hmm. So many beautiful, beautiful details that all the children came up with. I, of course, he had an untimely death, and uh, that, yes. that's a part of the history, too. Yes. So you have seen history in El Paso. Yes. Uh, my autobiography is called Crystal Moments. I mention this sometimes. You just gave us a crystal moment about that reproduction of the characters um, there. Give me some other crystal moments in your teaching and singing experiences. Well, children don't realize how the song and poetry go together. Okay. I had them do a rap song and they didn't know until afterwards that it was one of the poems by Shel Silverstein in his book At the Edge of the Sidewalk. Okay. And it was the one on the boa constrictor. And they just thought it was rap because they were just going at it. <laughs> I'm being eaten by a boa constrictor, a boa constrictor, a boa constrictor. I'm being eaten by a boa constrictor, and I don't like it too much. Oh, yeah. Man. <laughs> and well, I was wondering if you were going to sing on my show, but I didn't know it was going to be about a boa constrictor. No, you see? <laughs> so creative. And they didn't realize that it was a poem that they would be reading later because Shel Silverstein is one of my favorite, my favorite authors. Oh my I goodness. love all his poetry. Now, outside of the school area, um, I have memorable times watching you do Revolution at the Shamazal and yes. some of these uh, programs you've done. Wasn't that a highlight of your singing career, working oh, with those programs? Well, that was one of my big stepping stones. Okay. And the other one was, I went, uh, a friend of mine told me about a contest in Juarez at the Electric Q. Okay. And first place winner would uh, do a recording and uh, do several television shows. Well, I won first place in that one. Oh, good. What I didn't know was that I had to pay for my own arrangements. I 
I had to pay for my own musicians. All they were giving me was the time in the studio. So I didn't do it in Juarez. Mm -hmm. Later on, I went to Mexico and recorded with Mariachi Mexico de Pepe Villa. Okay. And that was a beautiful, beautiful experience because the arrangements and the direction was done by, by um, Maldonado, Zeta Maldonado, Fernando Zeta Maldonado, who wrote many, many songs that became very famous, sang by Vicente Fernandez, by Javier Solis, Que va, que te deje yo, que va. That was one of his most famous ones. And, um, but then Revolución was one of my greatest experience because I learned how much history is here in El Paso. Mm -hmm. That's when I realized, you know, that, that it's all here. I have a neighbor whose grandmother bought the property, owned the property across the street from my house. And she was the first female photographer for the El Paso Herald Post in the early 1900s. Oh my word. Uh -huh, she <laughs> Photography was, was relatively new. To yes, the very new, then. very new. And he has all these pictures of El Paso. And he said he found, Mr. Fitzgerald said he found documents where his grandmother wrote that she would entertain Pershing one month. A general? Yes, General Pershing one month. And then two months down the road, she would entertain Pancho Villa and his Dorados. Oh in that property oh right word. there. Uh-huh. Oh. So uh, it, there's, I learned a lot about the history here in El Paso from that one program. And then we had a history buff, Gilberto Herrera, whom we learned a lot from because he was the one that was bringing in all these details to the program. He was wonderful. D sad that he passed away, but... Um, he was great. Tell me about some of your backups for some of your scene. I've, I've seen you at Music Under the Stars with the big group behind you, and then some smaller venues with your small band. What did you call your band? They're, they call themselves the Two Man Band. The Two Man Band. Mm -hmm. Okay. They're from Guadalajara, Jalisco, Jose and Primo Sandoval, and they've been in the music business all their life. When they were children, they were regulars in the programa Ojos Tapatíos from Mexico. Okay. Now what about uh, the Shamazal? What were some of the bigger groups that played behind you when you were singing there? Los Galleros, Mariachi Los Galleros, okay. they were, and Mariachi America. They're the first big, great group here in El Paso, mm -hmm. Mariachi America. Uh -huh. Some of those groups, when they used to see me dancing while they were up there performing, and I'd be dressed to doing the Mexican dancing, uh, and I preferred Mariachi Loco. And mm -hmm. they got to calling me El Profesor Loco <laughs> <laughs> when they would see me as Uncle Sam, something different. Uh -huh. uh, so, and what about music in the schools? When we have budget cuts, don't we hear pressure about cutting on these arts programs? Did you ever get hurt by that or had to move to another school? Yes, yes. What was that? But uh, I was moved to another school because the principal was not at that school anymore. When the new principal came in, he figured, they don't need choir. So I was the first one that was bounced out of the school. Mm -hmm. Twice it has happened to me, mm -hmm. twice. But they don't realize how much discipline the children learn right. in a choir, in a formal choir. So much discipline there, and they love it, they enjoy it. And, and if they learn music, then they can use that out there in the community in so many different ways, yes. in different settings. Yes. It's not just like being a football player and you, that's it, football. Oh no, the discipline uh, yeah. of being in a formal choir, mm -hmm. I think it's what helps them most. Now, have you had experiences that I've had of someone years later, they've grown up, and my wife has had this experience too, and they come up to you and they tell you what you have meant to them in their life and their careers? Well, what happened to me at Walmart not too long ago was really funny. I was paying at the garden center at Walmart on Dyer, and the cashier, this young man, said, Ms. Martinez, are you still as grouchy as you used to be before? <laughs> <laughs> and you said? I said, yes. 
I haven't changed. He said, good. <laughs> Did you ask him if he learned anything from the fact that you were grouchy? <laughs> they, were, they, they were very, very good because I told them being in a choir is a privilege. You don't have to be here. You, you are here because you really love the music and you want to be here. If you don't have the discipline, if you don't want to behave, go back to the classroom and do work. Mm -hmm. So they were all very, very good. And you have to point out to them that it's a team effort. If the, somebody yes. is really off or they're tone deaf, then you have to deal with this, maybe put them where they're not causing so much, especially if you got microphones. You played those games, haven't you? Well, I remember Dr. Scarborough one time. My colleague here at the community college. Yes. The way that she would take care of that, she would say, somebody here is off key. I'm not going to say any names, but you better get back on key. She'd look at us straight off the face. <laughs> Walk up with you, better get back on key. <laughs> uh-huh. Um, yeah, I had wonderful experiences with Dr. Scarborough also. Yeah, I dress up as Chopin for her oh, Chopin yes. festival. I have pictures with you. Yes, at, where we I was do. Dressed as Chopin. I don't miss the Chopin <laughs> concert. Don't okay. miss it. I love. And just uh, Sunday, I went to a little party, and the uh, keyboard player in the band was one of her students that was with us, Alfredo. He was uh, the keyboard player for that band. Right. And I love to see friends that were with me in the choir with Dr. Scarborough. I love to see them when they're out there performing. The uh, director, our director at St. Pius Choir, was one of her students. Oh, my goodness. Well, about how old do you think you were when you discovered you were a singer? This has been part of my life. When I was a little girl, my aunt used to sing in a program in Juarez, XJ, called Noches Rancheras. Okay. And my uncle and his friend had a trio called Los Romanceros Ooh. in Juarez. <laughs> so music has always, always been part of my life. My mother played the guitar and taught my father how to play the guitar. So it, music has just been with me always that I can remember. Okay. What about other members of your family? Do uh, you have brothers, siblings, or sisters? I have uh, three brothers and one sister. Did they kind of pick up on the musical thing my, also? My brother Jaime, the youngest one, okay. he loves to sing the Elvis songs, and he is very, very, very good. <laughs> he is beautiful. He sings beautiful. Mm -hmm. My sister sings too, and my brother Hector sing also. When we were kids, we would go Christmas caroling, and my sister Sandra would be off key, and we didn't know how to tell her not to sing. So we told her one day, Sandra, you are going to be the director. So when we go Christmas caroling, you hold a flashlight, <laughs> you tell us what song is next, and you direct us. So she caught on. She caught on to what we were doing. But you were being diplomatic. Yes, but she would eat all the, all the snacks that the neighbors would give us. <laughs> and she'd go, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, sing, sing. And she would eat all the snacks. Oh, my goodness. So, well, that's a wonderful moment. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. We had, a, we had wonderful times. And you're clear. We had really great times. Now, besides well, Dr. Scarborough, who were some other mentors to you? Hector Serrano. Yes, Hector and I have worked together. Hector Serrano and um, also Miss Morgan, Jackie Morgan. Okay. She was also very, very good. I remember being in the fourth grade and um, they had already given me a solo for Christmas. Then my dad moves us to the Sunset area and I didn't have a solo anymore, and I think that's what hurt more than anything else, mm -hmm. that I didn't have a solo for that Christmas program. Hurt and your heart. Uh, yes, it <laughs> sure did. It sure did. But when I was at Vilas, I learned a song that stayed with me all my life. And you don't realize what a wonderful country you live in until you live out of the country. When I lived in Iran, I lived in Germany, and I loved it. 
And I lived in Iran three years. That's when you realize what a wonderful, wonderful country we live in. And it really bothers me when people badmouth our country or people don't appreciate what we have right. because they don't know. Do you want to sing a little bit for us? Now, you sang some rap while ago. Uh, I know it's a cappella, and the acoustics are not here the greatest, but you want to share with me and the audience just a little bit of your music? There is one song my mother used to sing to us when we were for our birthdays. And it's a song that was recorded by Los Panchos, but for some reason, it never made the charts. And I think it was because they were promor promoting other songs okay. on that same right. LP. Right. But this is a beautiful song. And it goes, Pensar que nada tengo que ofrecerte en este día Ni flores o tampoco una gardenia del jardín Sufriendo y acabando en la desdicha de ser pobre y aquí a la conclusión de regalarte el corazón sufriendo y acabando en la desdicha de ser pobre y aquí a la conclusión de regalarte El corazón. So you need. Oh, the heart. Oh, mm -hmm. heart. Now, everyone here now knows why you were one of my favorite students and one of my favorite performing <laughs> characters you. that worked with well, me. Well, I loved here. going to class because I never knew what you were going to look like that day. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, I still have people stopping me. I said, do you still do costumes? I said, well, I've retired. I don't do costumes in class, but I'm still going to be Uncle Sam in the parades, and I'm going to do some other characters out there in the community. And so we have some great, such great times. You always dressed very nicely. Thank you, oh, What sir. about that for setting an image for the young people, especially the young females that are coming up to not be a little soft on their self-image? Well, I always told my daughter, this is one thing that I always told my daughter, okay. not to get tattoos. Because you, I told her, if you have tattoos on your arms, even if you wear a dress that you paid $2,000 for, it's not going to look as beautiful as you would if you just wear a $10 dress and your skin is beautiful that's and right. clean. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing that I always stressed on with my daughter, I have one daughter. And, um, but, um, and, and she, she went ahead and she never got a tattoo <laughs> and now she's uh, married and she has two babies okay. and, um, Still has nice skin. <laughs> yes, nice, clean skin. My wife and I were at a, a, a fundraiser for something a few years ago, and a ballet group from UTEP was there. Uh -huh. And uh, at least one of them had tattoos on her back and on her shoulders and so on. And then she went pretty. And my wife kept saying, oh, she would be so much prettier if she didn't have that tattoo. It takes away from her dance. <laughs> yes, I think so. But everybody, you know, has their own opinion and whatever they oh, sure. makes them happy. Right. But I, I'd rather see girls with their beautiful, clean skin. Yeah, right. Well, before our time's up, we just have about maybe four minutes remaining. Have I overlooked something that you found interesting over these years of our friendship and uh, working together? That You don't have to compliment me, but on things that you found that we were doing out there in the community that meant something to you? Oh, I just love seeing you everywhere that we, whenever we perform or I go somewhere and you're there, I love to see you at the Chopin concerts. But I remember at the public libraries, yes. we would read to the children and they'd be around us there and you could see in their eyes, they were so excited about what we were reading to them, usually Christmas stories of some uh -huh. kind or another, a variety of Christmas stories. And we still have visual images of those children in front yes. of us. Yes. Out in the community. Yes. And they could go home and tell their parents about what was happening there. I love to read to children. I love 
I love to see their facial expression. Yeah. And I, I love it. I love well, it. Well, I'm glad that you became an educator and followed in that. And you've, you've impacted so many people in so many different ways with music and education and, and just being who you are. Thank you. A, a good friend to people in the community. Um, tell us about that, about some of the people that you've worked with in the community who have supported you. We have about two minutes left with the city of El Paso. The Arts Resources. There you go, the Arts Resources. The Arts okay. Resources, the Museum of Art. Okay. They've also, when they have in November, a special program about the Mexican Revolution. Okay. We've done that for them. And I, and I love it, I love it. I love performing, I love to see people happy, people that I haven't seen in a long time mm -hmm. when they show up. You said you hadn't been in this studio, but you'd been in the old studio oh, from the old years studio. ago. So I got to yeah. tell you this story. I went to Seattle, Washington one year to sing. And in the audience, there, I could see this lady jumping up and down, jumping up and down. She wanted to make sure that I saw her. <laughs> After the program, she came up to me. It was somebody that had gone to high school with me, and I had never seen her since. Mm -hmm. And she said she went just because she was curious to see if it was me. Uh -huh. The last ch name had changed. Uh -huh. I was Carrillo before. Okay. And But she wanted to see if it was me. And it was you. It was me. <laughs> and I was happy to see you, Sela. Very back happy to see you. Well, you her. brought back some great memories for me today Thank to you. see your lovely face. Thank you very much. The lovely much. heart that you have. Thanks for singing for me. Thank your heart you. Today. Thank Truth you so. very much. And there you are, another Perspectives El Paso program. And we hope that you'll tune in for other interesting people that I'm going to interview. I'm Leon Blevins of El Paso Community College. Thank you for being here.